Hello there, welcome. My name is Joshua Delisle and believe it or not, I'm a designer blacksmith. Who'd have thought? So, in my quest to build my own CNC plasma table, I've somehow gotten involved with CNC tabletop lasers. Now, basically, in a previous video, I took one of these CNC top lasers and basically put a plasma on it, therefore a plasma table. And you know what? I'm thinking I might actually put a oxyacetylene kit on one and cut some really big thick steel. Wouldn't that be a good video? Anyway, to my surprise, after reviewing a few other models, it turns out you can engrave steel quite nicely on these new machines. However, there appears to be an arms race now with these CNC lasers, and it's getting more and more difficult to know what is the right one for you. So hopefully, in me reviewing these latest models, you can make a more informed choice. So what you see before you is the Longa Ray 5. Now Longa are known for making their 3D printers and so they've incorporated their technologies into this wonderfully built and simple machine. Now I'm going to get straight to the point and list the benefits of why I think this is particularly a very good model. It revolves around this lovely screen that you see here. So this actually very solidly built metal box is an offline controller. It's got a nice LCD display and we'll start playing with that in a little moment. But not only that, you can operate this via Wi-Fi completely remotely. So no need to bring your laptop in here or anything like that. You just upload the file. It could be from anywhere in the world. In fact, you can actually operate this thing from all the way in the Bahamas. We'll check all of those functions in a short minute. Now with this machine, you also get a 10 watt laser which is very similar to the one that we've used previously to engrave steel. We'll also test its function of cutting wood including nine millimeter thick ply. Now what I've also noticed is that the cooling fan vents air to the nozzle acting like an air assist which is very beneficial for cutting and engraving. What's also incredibly helpful are these measurements on the gantry. This is all in reference to the center line of the laser so you can get jig setting up done really quickly. Pretty much all the parts are made of metal and seem extremely robust and the the instruction manual was very very easy to follow. So the first test that I want to do is to engrave some stainless steel because we're metal workers that's what we're doing on this channel. So I've got it fixed to my jig table here to make sure everything is flat so it, it will warp believe it or not when it's being engraved so having it secured down is a must. So I've created a special file here on the micro SD and we'll just slot that in there. Now we're ready to go. So here's the opening menu. Okay so now let's click on engraving and here I've got some files that I'm going to use. So in this case, we're going to use this one, Metal NC. So you can see it's selected at the top here. Now here I can click frame. This will draw me a little circle around the area just so I know it's hitting in the right place. So I'm going to click that for me. And it's telling me how many times that I want to engrave it and whether I want to go through with it. I'm going to go back for now. I'm just going to move the gantry over a little bit. Let me just show you what's happening. So just using the controls, I'm gonna move the machine over a little bit. I'm gonna move it over 10 mil, up 10 mil. Now I'm gonna frame it. That's the build area. So I think we're ready to go and I'll click play. All right, there we are. All right, so what you're seeing here, see this square? What I started off at is 1,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power. All of this is 100% power. And I increased every divot by 100 millimeters per minute. So by the time it's gotten over here, we're getting to somewhere like 8,000 millimeters per minute. Now, I was hoping to get some temper colors, uh, but that's not really the case. But you can still get different hues. So if you did want something that was multi-layered, like a gray scale, um, you definitely can do it with stainless steel. So I think I'm going to stick with 1,000 millimeters per minute and we'll engrave my maker's mark on this side shall we I'm going to give it just a little quick rub with some acetone, just take off any soot. Look at that. That should be 45 millimeters, I believe. I hold that there. 
That is pretty much bang on the money, I think. Happy with that. So for this next test, we're gonna use the Wi-Fi function, but I've got this shiny piece of stainless steel here. This is a grain grinder, actually, and I'm just gonna test by putting my maker's mark just on it here, like so. So with shiny material, I think it's a good idea to have some sort of blacking so that you don't get reflection back up to the laser. And my technique for doing that is just sooting it with a lighter. So holding it just on the edge of the flame, we're gonna put a nice layer of soot. There we go, just like that. And we're gonna reduce the speed now to just 200 millimeters per minute. And it'll be interesting to see how it will cope on a curved area like that also. Now I've actually propped the machine up just using some Lego bricks and funnily enough, the metal parts here actually slot into the top of the Lego quite nicely. So a nice trick for getting different heights if you've got big objects. Now the shroud's actually in the way for me here so I'm actually gonna remove the shroud. So that was done by just two screws in the side there. Now you actually get given an extra dark pair of uh, laser glasses. And so I'll definitely be wearing these all the time now that shroud's off. Okay, so unfortunately, my Wi-Fi wasn't strong enough to do it in the workshop, so I've brought it to my craft table in the house instead. So to connect to the Wi-Fi, what you have to do is click on Tool. This gives you the Wi-Fi option, tells you about the thing. You click on this button here, and then that will enable you to have the option of connecting to your Wi-Fi. So you type in your network key, and then you're connected. I can't show you this bit, though, because it will give you all of my information, and I don't want people all the way around the world um, using my engraver, to be honest. Although I bet that would be funny. Once you're connected, what you'll find is your IP address for this machine will be on the little screen here. You can then go on your phone or your computer and type in the IP address into your internet browser. So this is actually, you know, if you go on Google, type in the IP address and you'll automatically send you to this page. Now, when I press these buttons, I can control this machine wirelessly. So now I can select the file that I want to use, do a little perimeter check. Okay, so now I believe we're ready. Just press play. Put the glasses on, why don't you? So I'll tell you what, without that shield on it, Inoff gives off a lot of light. Right, so that was difficult to film, but let's uh, move it out of the way and see what the results are like. Alright, so let's move all the soot away. So that's kind of worked. It's actually really dark at the bottom here. I think that's where it was better focused. And then as he goes, goes up further, it dramatically changes to be a, a bit lighter. Can you see that? That's not too bad, that. I'm quite pleased. Right, so it seems to be able to do metal work just fine. And I'm going to suggest if it can do steel, then it will carve through wood, no problem. But let's test the accuracy of this by cutting something extremely complex that needs to be fitting perfectly. Right, I'm going to see if I can assemble this now and we'll see if the cuts are so accurate that they can slot together nicely. That's meant to slot in there. Oh, that's going to be tight. Cool, that was a tight squeeze. I think I've underestimated the tolerance on this.
that has actually blown my mind. Look at this, this little key. So look, to get the key out, you have to open the iris. Look at that. But that also operates a lock, which is in there. And then to actually open the box, you have to slot it into this part here and turn it. That is amazing. So Longa sent me the file to make this, but it actually is created by a company called U-Gears. Longa, I think, has paid for the licensing to be able to use this, but as far as I understand, you can't actually download this. But I think if U-Gears were to start allowing that, their patterns to be downloaded, I think there's a massive market considering the amount of people who have got laser machines these days. What's brilliant as well is using CAD software, you could actually scale this to any thickness of material. So rather than being three millimeter thick, we could actually cut this out of nine millimeter thick ply and make a really big one. Anyway, I actually put the lid on the wrong way around, uh, but I haven't got time to fix this now. I've got to move on. So lastly, I want to show you what it's like cutting some nine mil thick hardwood ply. And I tell you what, I learned something. As I said before, I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. You can thank me by liking this video. So what I was trying to do is what I did with the last model where I'd set it at 500 millimeters per minute at a full power and I'd just keep doing passes until it penetrates all the way through. And I was curious to see what, how many passes it would be like in comparison to the other one. For whatever reason, this machine did not like doing that way at all. I was doing something like 16 passes and it still wasn't cutting properly. So I went back to doing my cutting tests, as you can see there. And to my surprise, it actually favors doing it really slowly. So it actually goes all the way through nine mil thick ply in just one pass. You can see the laser actually penetrating through, but three passes I found was the optimum, but I had to add air assist. So what we have is like a quarter inch hose that comes from my compressor and the compressor is reduced now to 20 psi and with a simple cable strap I made this little nozzle. Now what that is is an electrical ferrule so I use these all the time for tidying up the ends of cables and it just turned out it made the perfect little nozzle simply bent over like that literally took me less than five minutes to create and I just taped it onto the nozzle. But anyway let me show you the results. This is hardwood ply. Now, if you're smart, you can get tons of this stuff for free. I actually approached a local factory that makes sheds and they have tons of these offcuts that are just going for scrapping, going for burning. So I just asked politely, could I have a whole load of them? And they were like, yeah, help yourself. So yeah, I'm gonna make lots of things out of this stuff. So here's another trick that I thought might be useful to someone. To keep all the wood nice and parallel, I've actually put a piece of steel that is straight and indexed it against the feet here. Now I can push the wood up against the steel and it'll always remain 90 degrees to the laser. And what I'm making is a toolbox because I've got lots of little bits now and nowhere to put them. So this is gonna be really handy for making some lovely toolboxes. Anyway, enough talk, play. So that is awesome. I can't complain about those results. And a box like this will last so much longer than a plastic one or a thin tin one. So let's just go through my conclusions and what my design recommendations would be for a machine like this. So I think this is a great machine, but these are my preferences. Rather than having this little high gauge, I think it would be better to have a drop down feature. Now I'm talking about machines across the board, not just longer here. This is for any design manufacturer who wants to improve on these models. This is what 
what I think. I think the height adjustment of these lasers should have a little screw top where you can just make little fine adjustments just with your hands here. I don't think that would be a difficult thing to make and that's something that I might even add to one of my machines. I think all of these desktop CNC lasers should have an offline controller built in. That is fantastic and I think Longer did a perfect job with that. Now an air assist isn't very difficult to make but I think all models should come with air assist. Even just a little nozzle input just so you could put your compressor to it because it makes such a massive difference when cutting. The thing I'd like to see in other future models is the fire sensor. There should be an on off switch for that. For whatever reason if you're using it with a lot of natural daylight it will start triggering itself off automatically. And that's really annoying. So a lot of people put tape over theirs. I put tape over mine. So I think there should be some sort of a, an override there. I understand why it's there, especially if you've got a woodworking workshop. You know, this thing will cause a fire. Other than that, I think this is an excellent machine. So do check out the links in the description. There are some good offers on the moment. And if you're interested in getting patterns for laser cutting, do let me know in the comments section because I would seriously think about starting to design lots of different things to be used with laser cutters. Anyway, stop watching stuff, get out there and forge a life worth living. See you in the next episode. Bye bye.